The Torpedo is MSI, more budget-concerned uh, gaming motherboard. It, it's usually here to offer more for much less. But this year's um, Torpedo, the Z690 powered Torpedo, changes all that. In short, out with the light and in with the heavy. Today we are reviewing the Mag Z690 Torpedo EKX from MSI. And yes, you heard that right, EK as EKWB, because the thing comes with its very own monoblock. Now, how indecent is that? It's pretty indecent. So the mag, as we said earlier, is MSI, more budget-friendly yet aggressive gaming motherboard, and the torpedo, it's entry-level, or one of them. And don't be fooled because uh, the entry-level of a budget lineup doesn't mean cheap or, or weak. And, and MSI really wants to pass this message along. Go spoiler alert, uh, this thing, despite being somewhat affordable, is an horror house of overclocking, in a good way. So much so that MSI partnered with EKWB, the Slovenian custom water cooling company, to equip the torpedo with its very own custom fitted water cooled monoblock. Now that's quite of a bipolar kind of a product because on one hand you have the torpedo, which is, you know, king of the budget, very reserved kind of motherboard. And on the other, you have an EKWB monoblock, which is, well, usually reserved for very expensive motherboards. I mean, I'm talking about a thousand dollars and above. But once you get out of your stupor and start toying with this thing, you quickly realize that the marriage between MSI and EKWB kind of makes sense and delivers on most of its promises. Not all of them, mind you, and we'll see that through this review, but on the most important ones at least. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a six-layered PCB ATX motherboard, which is a great foundation for any gaming motherboard, especially at this price range. Now, having that many layers is absolutely what you need to insulate your components from PCIe5 signaling on one hand and provides a better VRM heat dissipation on the other. Now, design-wise, well, again, despite being an entry-level motherboard, it comes with rather premium brush-finished cooling components. Very military tech inspired and a little more precise in its execution than seen on its previous iteration. Now, CPU socket wise, the Mac Z690 Torpedo comes with a brand new LGA 1700 CPU socket, which boasts no less than 200 additional connecting pins than seen on its predecessor, easily explained by the Alder Lake higher core count and the new PCIe standard available on all Z690 powered motherboards. Talking of which, uh, worth mentioning the fact that as uh, in all previously reviewed Z690 motherboard, the Z690 Torpedo juggles between three different kind of PCIe standards. Now, most importantly, VRM-wise, the MAG Z690 Torpedo is giving us way more than its competition and price range. It has 1870 amp phases organized in a 16 plus one plus one configuration. That is an unrealistic 1260 amps, 1160 of which are CPU centric. That's 40% more VRM power than available on its previous generation, and obviously more than enough to operate and even seriously overclock the most demanding processor in the Alder Lake family. Now, the great thing about this torpedo in particular is that if for any reason uh, you choose to stick with the classic alloy passive cooling elements, you still have a very powerful and efficient motherboard. With a severely overclocked i7-12700K, the VRM cooling components do a wonderful job in keeping temps below 50 degrees Celsius on all blocks. The only issue though is the CPU temperature, which even with a high-end all-in-one water cooler, flirt with 90 degrees Celsius, and that is not good. But this is where the EKWB monoblock comes in. I think they call it mana or something. The monoblock doesn't only cover the CPU die, but our entire motherboard VRM. And again, kudos to MSI and EKWB for getting the monoblock to work without removing the entire motherboard cooling elements as we usually do. Works pretty good and keep the board aesthetic all clean and nice. Now, the biggest difference you'll see when using this monoblock is the CPU temperatures, which goes from 90 degrees Celsius and above to a cool, cool 60 to 70 degrees Celsius 
and that means a world of difference in terms of CPU lifespan. And VRM wise, I also observed some really good heat savings, which will give you plenty of room for some serious overclocking, which I obviously tried and shamelessly pushed my processor to an insane 5 GHz, which for the first time worked for more than 20 seconds. That's what custom water cooling will do for you. In short, with the monoblock on, this thing is a complete different motherboard. Your CPU will live longer, your motherboard will live longer, you will live longer. As a result, EKWB transformed what was meant to be somewhat of a budget kind of lame motherboard into one of the very best overclocker available today on the Z690 market. So in its uh, a monoblock configuration, I, I can definitely see the Z690 Torpedo handling easily i7 and i9 processors with not only pushing them to their nominal limits, but even offering some serious extreme overclocking potential. Now, memory-wise, the Z690 Torpedo supports 128GB of DDR5 memory organized in a dual-channel configuration and overclockable up to a mind-boggling 6.4GHz. And that is a surprise because uh, usually budget-minded uh, Z690 motherboards go for the slower DDR4 standard, which you know, still fares very well in the gaming context, but is a measurable uh, um, uh, downgrade. And here, MSI went above and beyond to make sure that the torpedo would suffer no limitations whatsoever, uh, not only in gaming, but also in a production context. And to give you an idea, I, um, I just reviewed a 600 bucks motherboard with the exact same memory configuration. So yeah. Uh, MSI is definitely not trying to be cheap on us here, and that is a big memory kudos to MSI for this. Now, storage-wise, again, a sizable upgrade when compared to the Z590 powered motherboards. We got four M.2 solid state drive connectors, three of which can operate at PCIe 4.0 standard instead of only one previously, and providing no less than up to 64 gigabit per second worth of data swap, obviously making uh, the PCIe 4.0 standard mainstream on all Intel motherboards. Finally. Now, as usual, M.2 solid state drives do get really hot really quickly, especially at PCIe 4.0 standard, but thankfully MSI did not skim on its cooling remedies. We have two beautiful, thick, good looking thermo padded heat shields, which do a great job at keeping our sticks cool at all time. Last but not least, I am delighted to see that MSI has equipped all of its M.2 solid state drives with its very own screwless locking mechanism, which only made its coming out a short year ago. Overall, M.2 solid state drive storage is slowly becoming a first class citizen on the 690 budget motherboards. Now, that's something which will have a direct impact on your day to day computing. So, yeah, big uh, uh, storage kudos to MSI for this. Now, PCIe expansion wise, we got four PCIe exports, one bachelor and three 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU has 16 PCIe lanes, therefore this is where you'd want your video card for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. In addition, and for the first time ever, it operates at PCIe 5.0 standard, meaning it can swap up to 64 gigabyte per second dwarfing the naked 16 slots, which operates four lanes at PCIe 3 standard, meaning four gigabyte per second only. Obviously a single video card motherboard, uh, which is totally expected given the fact that this is a budget motherboard. But nevertheless, I want to note the fact that, well, having PCIe 5.0 standard is great, but not necessarily very useful since uh, current video cards do not go beyond the PCIe 3.0 bandwidth levels. It's gonna take a few years for any video cards out there to dispense PCA 5.0 level bandwidths. That's gonna take at least four to five years minimum. So great for marketing, but that's about it for now. Chipset wise, cause that's mostly why we are here. We got Intel's first PCIe 4.0 native supported chipset. It has more bandwidth, more lanes, more USBs than its predecessor, but most noticeably the Z690 chipset manages to deliver PCIe 4.0 standard bandwidth levels on a very cold six watts heat footprint. Now that is half of what AMD managed to do for the same kind of standard. And the infamous reason why AMD had to equip most of its X570 chipsets with expensive 
expensive, sometimes noisy chipset fans. In comparison, the Z690 shield is much smaller, costs less, and does a great job at keeping the chipset below 45 degrees Celsius on its own. In short, uh, the Z690 chipset makes PCIe4 more affordable and more mature, and helps it uh, to become the the, the standard of reference for all incoming motherboards. Next, back IOIs. First, let me note the presence of an integrated backplate, always a plus. And starting from the left, we got upgraded display port and HDMI outputs for our integrated graphics, our flash BIOS button for an easy CPU-less BIOS upgrade, two second generation USB plugs, two third generation USB plugs able to transfer data up to five gigabit per second, four 3.2 second generation USB plugs able to transfer data up to 10 gigabit per second, including a Type-C, a 2.5 gigabit LAN, uh, I want to say only because it does contrast with the additional 1 gigabit LAN previously available on its Z590 predecessor, and a surprisingly premium 8-channel ALC4080 audio codec from Realtek, which usually finds its way on more premium motherboards, and does a great job at providing a rich audio experience both in gaming and other audio shenanigans, but most importantly, it has excellent recordability, mainly thanks to its DSD decoder and having both left and right audio channel traced on dedicated PCB layers and therefore protecting our codec from unwanted static interferences. Overall, a, a rather basic but premium back IO. I mean, it does provide plenty of bandwidth in and out and, and special kudos for, for the audio uh, codec, which is definitely one of those very premium, usually expensive codec you see on expensive motherboard. The only problem I have here is the connectivity, which is basically you know brought back to its very minimalistic expression. We do not have Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth. We just that 2.5 gigabit line, which I find a little bit light, and at least gives some room for improvement for next uh, iteration of this motherboard. Now, front panel connector-wise, well, here we got nothing new whatsoever. We have our usual two USB second generation front panel connectors for monitoring, a five gigabit USB third generation front panel connector, and our type C front panel connector, which can run up to 10 gigabit per second, all of which were fully expected at this price range. Now, cooling wise, we got eight PWM fan connectors, including one water pump, which is, you know, rather generous, uh, but not surprising, uh, knowing that this board is de facto going to be the center of a rather complex custom water cooling system. So yeah, uh, you will need every extra connector you can get. Now, troubleshooting wise. Well, we have our usual first aid easy debugger here to signal the main stages of our boot. Now, this is absolute bare minimum you should have on any Z690 motherboard and obviously uh, applies even more on this board. I'm just very disappointed that we have nothing else. I know that this was supposed to be a budget motherboard, but when you put a monoblock and expect it to be a custom water cooling system, uh, a motherboard, well, you should have more options such as mem OK, um, you know, a, a soldered button, or at least a QR code uh, screen so that you know what's going on when something is not booting the way it should be. So again, something MSI really needs to improve and add, even if it's gonna cost 20 bucks more, they have to put those options in on a, on a custom water cooling motherboard, my opinion. Finally, this would not be a gaming motherboard without the uh, performance increasing RGB fest that made us all want to be better humans than simple biologically uh, decaying mammals. Starting with the gorgeous EKWB monoblock, which gives us a perfect example of what RGB can do on a large see-through piece of plexi, steel, and water. It dresses a large portion of our board with light and colors, and it looks absolutely splendid. Big hug, beautiful RGB kudos to EKWB, EKWB, but certainly not to MSI, which well, went the easy way and did not add a single bit of RGB LED on this Board. No, uh, instead they added four connectors, three of which are addressable to add enough RGB strips to save the world from any impending dangers. Now, 
In conclusion, the MAG Z690 Torpedo EKX will cost you about $410. Now that is about $70 more than the same board without the EKWB monoblock. And the whole question is, as usual, is it worth it? Well, at 350 bucks, the torpedo on its own is, is, is a good motherboard. So it's an acceptable value, but definitely not the biggest bang for your buck, let me put it this way. You could go instead for Prime Z690A in its competition, and it'll probably give you more with a good standing bias and, and do a, a, as much damage to your processor than this motherboard would. Now, this said, um, Couple it with EKWB MANA monoblock, as I like to call it, and it's a complete different story. The fact is that the Torpedo Insane VRM can only show all of its overclocking potential if it is water-cooled by the EKWB MANA monoblock. Without it, no matter what cooling solution you're gonna go with, you're gonna have problems with your processor. It, it will go you know, way too hot, way too click quickly, and you'll be in a, in a, in a world of pain and thermal throttling. And that combination of components, right, th this marriage results into a motherboard which can compete with much more expensive products on the market. I'm talking 500, 600 dollars and above to get that level of overclocking enthusiastness. And but one thing I really love about this combo is the fact that. Uh, MSI and EKWB came up with a very easy solution to introduce custom water cooling to, to everybody. Usually to use a monoblock and cool not only your processor but also the VRM, you need to remove uh, the components. You have to remove the existing cooling blocks from your motherboard and here you don't have to. You just have to put some thermal pads on the existing block, put the monoblock on it and BIM, it works absolutely amazingly. I didn't think it would work that well, but it does. It really, really does. MSI and EKWB did not just produce another motherboard, but they did show some real uh, innovation for a lot of enthusiasts out there for a rather affordable price, which is rare these days. So not only is this about the most aggressive overclocker you can ever imagine, but I am truly, truly excited to see what those two are going to come up with.